All right, it's time to get into the Slack challenge. Um, as you know, every two months, Matt Armstead, our release pixie, gives us a new challenge. Um, the last one was in December. Uh, they always are two months long. So this one has now come to its end. It's the light challenge. And as usual, I pick three photos from all the submissions and I will review them here on the show. Now, this time we're doing something different. There's an experiment. This is not just on the podcast, it's also on video. So video uh, is uh, it's just much better to look at photos. And I've decided to just take that uh, Slack challenge and put this into its own video. Uh, if you are listening to the podcast right now, go to tfttf.com slash 809 video. If you're watching right now, here you go. By the way, it's also in your show notes in the podcatcher. So that's where you find it. Um, without further ado, let's get into the challenge. Here's the first photo that I chose, and it's by Aaron Pinasov. Pinasov, Pinasov. Colorful Light Juice is the title. And uh, it's, it's, I like it because what, what we're looking at here, if you, again, if you're not watching the video, you better do. But uh, if you can't watch the video right now, let me explain what we see. We see a black, a black backdrop. We see a prism on it, a glass prism probably, and some light beams and, uh, and then I realize, oh, it's not a black background. It's a white backdrop, probably a sheet of paper, I would guess. And it's one light beam and it does all that does all the magic that with the right exposure does all the magic. So we have a light beam, the main light beam, the light beam coming in on the right bottom. It's a bright white light beam and a prism does what a prism does. It, it, it reflects the light at its inner uh, surface or at the at the transition between the glass and the air there's a reflectance and that gets reflected around and gets bounced out towards the right top you can tell from the intensity that that's what happened uh, that that's what's happening um, there's another reflection the light gets reflected on the outside of the prism just slightly towards the right bottom so some loss there um, there's some spill going straight through uh, towards the left bottom and then there is what we kind of uh, no prisms for the rainbow the light gets the white light gets split up into the primary colors into a rainbow from red this is that's the color spectrum that we can see from red through orange yellow green and then blue and on the left of that is infrared and the right of that is ultraviolet and so that's our visible range that we can see and i like how simple this is it's just two ingredients it's a prism, it's a light beam, or three ingredients, a white sheet of paper that's on, and, and a camera. And it is pretty simple to put all this together into this kind of a photo. It takes a bit of experimentation, you have to do it in the dark, but hey, great job. So, next picture is by Mike Walter. Christmas tree! Yay! Don't we all like Christmas trees? And this one is a Christmas tree with light trails. So you have, I don't know, is it, is it rotating? Is that Christmas tree turning around? I guess it is because that's a long exposure with lights and it's, uh, it spins for some reason. Now, uh, we don't do this in Germany. I've never seen this before. I guess that some of you put the light, the, the, the Christmas tree on a stand that turns around and spins. Um, it's interesting because... Um, here in Germany, you go Christmas tree shopping and it's real trees and they are, well, as nature uh, sometimes does, they're not perfect. So I I distinctly remember that we always had this fight in the house, which, which part of the tree points towards the room and which points towards the wall. So you don't have to see that uneven part of the tree, but only the even part in the front. Um, so spinning, <laughs> spinning the tree is not a thing, but I guess if you have like a perfect tree and it's maybe even not a real tree, then it's definitely an option. <laughs> um, it, I think it's, I think it's interesting. I think you could use a spinner, a tree spinner to spin other things on it as well. So I think it would be interesting to explore this from a long exposure light trail uh, point of view without the trees but with other things but again still a uh, great photo the spinning christmas tree i like this and the third one that i chose is by uh, i think he's german uh, benjamin schwabe and it's titled light halo 
And there are several things going on that made me choose this. Um, first of all, you see a person and the person looks somewhere into the distance. So the, he's not looking into the camera. Uh, he has his hands folded and it almost looks like he's praying. And it all also kind of feels like he's kneeing on some bench, even though that that is not necessarily what's going on here. That's just uh, an assumption based on the culture I grew up in. And here in Germany, uh, in in a religious context, it looks like a religious context. Um, the praying kind of stature, stature. And then there is another thing that kind of that emphasizes that. And there's a bright and warm light from behind, which makes a wonderful hair light around his head. So the, the end of his hair is illuminated, which almost looks a bit like a halo. And then the steam is also lit. There's steam around his head, uh, probably because it's cold and that's his breath. And that steam is also lit by that bright light from behind. So it really looks like a halo, which is in the title, Light Halo. Um, so it does look very, <laughs> very religious. It feels very religious to someone who grew up in the culture that I grew up in. And uh, what adds to the photo, I think, is the background. Is it is this bright yellow warm light? And the foreground is this bluish cool shadow. And that together gives it uh, another interesting, like this is primary color contrast. They always look interesting, or most of the time they do. So these are the three photos. Aaron Pinasov, Mike Walter, and Benjamin Schwabe. Thank you so much for participating. Now there's one honorary mention that I can't, uh, that I can't not mention. And it's by our release pixie himself, by Rav Sitar. Now, before I show the picture, just a quick explanation, because most people probably now don't know what the release pixie is. This goes back, I would say, 10 years at least, um, where a lot of the helpers behind the scenes of the show were called pixies. And we um, had different like people going, uh, moderating forums and so on back in the day when we still had forums. And Matt... Uh, took on the job to release the show. He gets the show from me, he massages it, he he puts metadata in it, he puts it on the website, and that is the release pixie job. So Matt, uh, the release pixie, also submitted a photo, and he also played with prisms. He names this photo, he titles it Bending a Laser Beam, and that is uh, three prisms. He <laughs> didn't just take one, he threw all the prisms in that he had, probably. And this one is, I think, just one laser beam that gets split and thrown around in different ways. And it's, uh, it's again, on, on a white surface, I guess a sheet of paper. And this one, that's a red laser beam, like from a laser pointer, and that gets thrown around in the picture and bounced in weird ways through the prisms. And then there is also some white light that gets reflected and bounced around by the prisms and looks very scientific. That's definitely, has definitely a scientific uh, experiment feeling to it. So that's it for the light uh, challenge. Now let's hear it from Matt for the next challenge. Hello everyone, this is Rapsitar the Release Pixie here with your next Tips from the Top Floor Slack Challenge. So we're wrapping up the January 2018 challenge and we've got quite a few entries. So hopefully Chris will get through reviewing those soon. So the next challenge will be for March 2018. So the challenge will run from uh, February 1st to March 31st, 2018. And the challenge for this set is water. So you can take make water the subject you can make it an object in there you might even get away with freezing it you can do long exposure short exposure you can do almost anything with water so get out there and take a photo with the topic water post it up on the tips on the top floor slack and after the entries close chris will take a look and he'll pick three or so to review on the show and happy shooting everybody all right so there you heard it. New challenges, water. There are no prizes apart from me possibly reviewing one here on the show. Um, I think the real prize is you get to get off your butt and go out and take actual photos because listening to podcasts is great, but going out and taking photos is even greater. So go out and shoot. The topic is water. The uh, 
challenge will run until March, end of March 2018. Um, here's the instructions. Take a photo. If you, well, it's, a, it's better if you take a new photo. Otherwise, you're, it's, there's no exercise in there. There's no going out, uh, getting off your butt part in it. So take a new photo. Um, if you're not on the Slack yet, join the Slack. The Slack is um, at tfttf.com slash yslack. Submit your photo to the Slack channel, challenge-march2018. And um, if you don't know where it is in Slack, hey, ask people there. There's a really nice group of people who are really happy to help you. So that's it. Let's get back to the podcast, which, by the way, you if you're watching this video, if you want to hear the entire podcast, go to tfttf.com slash 809809. And that's it for today. Back to our regular programming.